Today we are going to talk about the art law crisis that has been subtly destroying the art community on TikTok. And I'm still wondering why I chose to go with subtly because after taking my time to search art law on TikTok, it appears this has been happening for quite a while now to the extent where young artists and artists who are new to the TikTok art community are scared of sharing their work because they are afraid of becoming the next art law on TikTok. So let's explore this new addition to the already toxic and unstable art community. Hey how's it going and welcome back to my channel. First off, happy new year everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday with your family and you spent enough time to cherish all your loved ones because they are the most important things in the whole world and since sadly they won't stay with us forever, we all should spend as much time we can with them as possible. Note to self. Anyways, I'm sorry to disrupt that little wholesome moment we were having together to talk about the subject of today's video which in manner of approach is very far from being wholesome. Today we're going to talk about art law which before now I thought will probably mean a backstory of a drawing or painting giving meaning into the mind of the artist and how they express their feelings and perceptions on life and the society we live in. But apparently art law has been taken totally out of context to mean something entirely different within the art community on TikTok. According to Urban Dictionary, Art law is a trend on TikTok where somebody posts something bigoted or overly sensitive with a drawing and most often people copy it to mock the original video, which is a rather broad overview of what art law is supposedly. Art law is explained in a much more digestible way on the website Know Your Meme, where it is explained as a phrase that refers to drama in art and animation communities, largely on TikTok, regarding problematic artists and their creations. On TikTok, art law is associated with a trend where artists criticize other artists' drawings that they deem problematic by posting videos tracing over the original art, fixing it or recreating the video showcasing the art in a mocking way. Looking at this definition of art law without proper context or seeing the kind of videos being posted on TikTok will make you think it sounds like a good idea to critique other artists to help them grow but after taking the time to watch some of these videos and actually go through the comments, you'll come to the realization that most of these so-called critiques are nothing but call out videos and unnecessary bullying for the most part which doesn't benefit any anybody in the long run and just causes more and more drama in the art community with artists going back and forth at each other and making fun of themselves and their art instead of trying to help each other get better or improve the quality of their drawings. And on each of every one of these art law videos, you'll always find people leaving comments like, I don't understand why the art community is just getting more and more toxic. Sure, they aren't that good, but they're probably just beginners. At this point, half of art law is bait and the other half is bullying children. The art community is so bad and I'm too scared to draw in public or show anyone my art. Every single time a video is posted on TikTok with a caption saying new art law just dropped, I always find comments like these which are either artists lamenting about how toxic the art community has become or just artists reacting and talking about the effect that these art law videos have on artists and especially beginner artists on TikTok. So let's take a closer look at how art law videos have negatively affected the art community. If you're new to this channel and love listening to art commentary style videos or just videos talking about the art community in general, please subscribe to the channel and join the Discord server using the link in the description. Now before this trend started causing drama around TikTok, the art community was pretty normal like it was on other platforms and people were genuinely supportive of each other and were consciously making an effort to help younger artists improve or at least share little tips they learned in their art journey that could help the other artists one way or another. Most artists were comfortable posting their work on TikTok without fear of getting unwanted criticism or being mocked for their art style or how their drawings looked. So how did it all go downhill all of a sudden? Somewhere down 
down the line, people started making fun of younger artists because of the way they draw certain features when clearly everyone could tell that the artist had the potential of developing their art style into something unique, especially since it was rather much different than what most people were used to seeing and they needed just a little bit of guidance and correction to teach them anatomy and proportions. But instead, some people just decided to be toxic and mean to them, bullying them, making fun of their drawings and replying to them with videos of them trying to use the technique saying it was impractical and didn't make any sense. This entire situation caused so much drama on TikTok since it went pretty viral and had people making videos about it both on TikTok and YouTube over how ridiculous the situation was. The young artist was bullied off the platform and forced to change the way they draw just because some people felt their drawing was ugly and their proportion and anatomy was totally wrong just because they hated the art style. What baffled me the most about this situation was people just couldn't control how they felt about another person's drawing and just felt it would be better for them to express their feelings on the internet and then try to condemn the artist just because they hated another person's drawing. Uh? If you don't like someone's work that much, just look away. There's a ton of other artists you could always look at if you don't enjoy another person's work. You don't have to make fun of it or turn them into a laughing stock in front of other people to the point where they have to literally leave the platform just because they felt embarrassed about the entire situation and how people were treating them and the type of comments people were leaving on their art. That is so demoralizing. And then only for them to come back and post art that looks so far different from what they would have accomplished if people had just let them experience growth the right way without negative influence and persuasion. Another form of this I've seen going around TikTok is where they call out people who have a cute chibi art style and call their art style a pro shipper art style. Just just because some artists who were problematic in the past and were considered as pro shippers had drawn in a similar manner or their art kinda looked similar to that. So they instantly classify any other artist's work that looks like that a pro shipper art style. As always, people countered the argument by explaining that pro shippers don't have an art style and the people saying that didn't understand what they were talking about. Now I understand most people who are not chronically online might probably not know what a pro shipper art style is and may not understand what it means when another person calls another artist's work a pro shipper art style. So I'll suggest you watch this video by my friend Thumin where she explains what the pro shipper art style is and pretty much covers everything you'll need to know about this topic. Another thing I've noticed is these art law videos have caused younger artists to begin to resent their old art because they believe if someone found their old work they will begin to make fun of it and laugh at the way the artist was drawing in the past. Uh? In my experience of making art, I haven't seen a single artist that started out making amazing art right off the bat with no knowledge of art whatsoever. Every artist starts out with pretty shitty art for the most part. And then after drawing for some time, they gradually start to improve and develop a feeling of the kind of art they want to create through taking in inspiration from other artists and whatnot. But apparently TikTok doesn't understand that and has a unique requirement for the type of art you are allowed to post on the platform before you can call yourself a TikTok artist. If your art doesn't look ridiculously good even as a beginner, then you're bound to find yourself reading comments like rendering process on your work or smile where in the original or some other catchphrase the kids on TikTok are using these days to antagonize artists. I found this post made by a TikTok user regarding art law videos and people who make them rather funny because according to them, people who made art law videos always ended up having really terrible art or just art that was probably not as good as the artists they were making fun of. A lot of other artists on TikTok resonated with this and replied to the video saying, it's it's just so sad. What do they gain from it? Well, nothing, I guess. Somehow it just makes them feel better that they're putting others down and they're getting a laugh from it. Other times they just think it makes them look cool when they can successfully chase an artist off a platform. A condescending, prideful, and egotistical sense of satisfaction because in their mind they justify it through untrue and regurgitated statements. It's always so condescending and their accounts are always private. 
they exclusively post Genshin Impact or have a mere art style. Now, this somewhat stands true, especially on Twitter. For some reason, the most problematic accounts on Twitter have a Genshin Impact PFP or post Genshin Impact fan arts on their account. I just don't understand the relationship between a troll and Genshin Impact. I just don't get it. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy drawing boys on the internet. Art law isn't about bad takes and shitty opinions. It's not about skill. It's about how these artists are just dumb or racist or bigoted or whatever. Art law is glorified and justified cyberbullying. It doesn't teach or help these people at all. It only gives them more attention which garners views which then serves to spread their bad views. Every single instance of art law I've seen has only made the situation worse. I think this is a very respectable, summarized and well thought out take. My only issue with it is I kinda don't agree that art law videos are a justified means for cyberbullying. Even though some artists could be rather weird and problematic on the internet, bullying them is just not going to help the situation in any way. I feel like much more can be achieved by just talking to them and trying to get them to see what why what they're doing is toxic and how it affects other artists instead of just resorting to bullying them for being bullies. I think for the most part most people in the art community are beginning to get more and more uninterested in these art law drama videos just as a result of seeing how it affects the artists in question and now I'm seeing more people react to these videos by not engaging with them or practically trying to protect the artists being called out in the videos. Especially if they're just unproblematic young artists or beginners who have no idea what they're doing and are just sharing their art and looking for help to improve. A lot of artists on TikTok happen to be beginners and young artists for the most part and are just looking for a community where they could share their work and be a part of something that supports them and helps them grow in the long run. So bashing them for starting out with bad looking art just doesn't make any sense to me. One really annoying art law trend I found was the videos of people who make fun of other artists anatomy after they learn anatomy for themselves. Just because you now understand anatomy to an extent and are barely even good at it, you think that automatically gives you the right to laugh at other artists who don't understand anatomy just as much as you do now. I mean at that point you should be able to start seeing anatomical mistakes in other artists work and yourself and the only reasonable thing to do is to show them how they could improve while also improving yourself and then sharing what you've learned by teaching others so they too can improve and learn as well. Instead of making it such a big deal and turning it into the next art law trend and shitting on the artists because of their bad anatomy in their drawings. I found this video from an amazing artist on TikTok talking about people who hate on an art style and they spoke about it touching some very interesting points. Is it possible to have an overrated art style? I'm asking because this week the art style police on TikTok decided to shit on a few artists. Basically the artists that have like this like kind of soft looking kind of jelly art style for being shit on, for being overrated, especially one of my mutuals. Last time we had this conversation, a child literally got bullied off the app. I'm talking about the rendering process, kid. I hate seeing people unhappy about their art styles, especially when they did nothing. They're just trying to draw and have fun, you know? What happened to like ignoring posts? What happened to scrolling, you know? Especially with how this app was designed, it is so easy just to go through the comments and be like, oh yeah, this art style is ass. And then that's how it starts a whole fucking cesspool of annoying people. And I get the consequences of posting online. When you post something, it goes out to everybody. So everybody has a right to share their opinion. But also, what the fuck happened to being nice? <laughs> like, just because someone posts something doesn't mean you can be rude to them. Like, I, hello? I thought it was common sense that we should let people draw for fun. You know, if it looks ugly to you, then scroll. Like, no one likes seeing anybody happy on this damn app. You're really mad about an art style when you can be doing something with your life. I believe this video resonated with a lot of artists on TikTok because the comments were filled with artists being supportive of each other and sharing their own experiences in the art community. The art community is supposed to be supportive and uplifting. It's so disappointing seeing it like this so often. And then someone tried to ruin the vibe saying, since when do artists have to sign a contract being nice and supportive? But then everyone else in the comments stood up to them without hesitation. This is the type of energy we like to see 
see in the art community. Half of the time, these people don't even draw themselves. So why are they trying to criticize someone's art when they can't even draw? What's that saying that goes, it's easier to destroy something rather than build it up? I feel like there's a lot of that going around. You see, most of the people who go around hating on artists and antagonizing them because of how they draw or what their drawings look like may not exactly know how to draw themselves, but they think their art is so good and is better than everyone else. So they carry themselves that way and treat other people badly, when in reality, your art is bad as well. I feel like most of the people making these comments aren't even putting themselves out there as artists because they will realize the time and effort all these artists are putting into their work for others to appreciate. People are just spectating the art community and telling us what styles should and shouldn't be used. Like if it's popular, it's because people like it. Just let them enjoy art. Something I noticed that also bothers me is when an art style suddenly starts getting popular and people like it and are trying to practice drawing in that art style, all of a sudden some people just randomly come out and start talking bad about the art style or start saying things that are problematic about either the artist or people who draw in that art style just to make that art style look bad. Jealousy much? People will always just look for the slightest reason to make people begin to hate something that is trending at the moment. Even if it isn't necessarily bad, I don't know, I don't know. It's just something that happens all the time. It's as if people aren't allowed to enjoy something anymore for the sole reason of it being good and popular. There always has to be something bad about it. But then again, you also can't blame them because for the most part, the art community has witnessed some pretty interesting cases where people we look up to end up being getting exposed for being problematic or weird and it just leaves a sour taste in everyone's mouth. It's literally the reason that people are scared to post their art and are critical of themselves. People don't realize how real influence is. What you see literally influences your way of thinking. Seeing people shit on something as simple as drawing eyes or hands can scare people into insecurity. This is not cute and you're not cool for making fun of them just because everyone else is. I think this whole trend of art love videos has exposed a much more bigger problem in the art community, especially on TikTok. The standard for what is considered good art has shifted and has now been placed so high to the point where it's beginning to become ridiculous for beginner artists or new artists to reach these unrealistic expectations immediately or in a short period of time. I think we have become so accustomed to seeing so much beautiful art that at the slightest instance of seeing someone with less art skills, it immediately stands out jarringly, which to me I feel is a big problem because the majority of artists you're going to find on TikTok are not going to be as good as the 5 or 10 really good artists that you follow on your account, who only post the best out of the best work in their portfolio. There's a higher number of people that are starting out in art and are just finding their way around, so realizing that you're going to see more beginner artists on TikTok because of how many kids are on the app should set a standard for what you should expect and how you should react. Things like making fun of them because of how they draw eyes or hands should turn into encouragement and advice on how to improve without it turning into mockery and scorn. At least that way, artists won't be scared of posting their work on TikTok or even leaving the art community there at all. As I've seen in many comments, every time I make a video talking about something that happened in the art community on TikTok, TikTok has the potential of being a great space for artists, especially because of the way the platform treats its creators and how easy it is for you to reach an audience that loves you for your work. And the only way for this to become possible is if the artists themselves start treating each other with more appreciation and considering the other person's feelings before leaving remarks and negative feedback. Now don't get me wrong, honest criticism and negative feedback do have their place in building character, but 
a little too much of it could end up doing more harm than good and ruining the entire experience for the person on the receiving end of it. So let's all just try to be nice to one another and treat everyone with respect accordingly. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video and it resonated with you, please leave the video a like and share it with a friend who resonates with it as well. With all that being said, I'll see all you pretty penguins in the next video. Bye.